people ask me, how do you become a makeup artist? God, I wish I could be a makeup artist. I always dreamed of being a makeup artist. And there is sadly so many people in society who are stuck in a dead end job. They're in a career they don't even like, um, whether they went to college for it or not. Statistically, so many people that go to college and have a degree don't even work in those fields. And a lot of times people go to college because their parents wanted them to, because they were, wanted to be an engineer like their father was. Um, I've taught doctors make varsity on different occasions, not that they planned on quitting their career. And I've had so many nurses, 40, 50 maybe, that I can't even count. So, um, you know, the medical career is looked up to and esteemed as it seems to be. That doesn't mean it makes somebody happy. What I think that I want to share for so many people out there that haven't been able to stand up for those and say, I'm going after what I want, what's going to make me happy in my life. Here's some little ammunition to win those arguments if you're in the same scenario. Um, and these are articles you can see right from Forbes. Everybody knows who Forbes are. Your parents are going to know who Forbes are. Um, in CNN about, you know, doctors. Doctors are going broke. And it's so true. Being a doctor was once so looked up to in esteemed position. Um, America's were changing. And makeup artists, of course, people think if doctors and engineers aren't working, they think that we must be, you know, at the homeless shelter but it's actually not that way at all. Industries that don't suffer in a bad economy. Now, some people have always heard that, you know, um, alcohol, cigarettes, candy, movie theaters, stuff like that, uh, which is true, but it's entertainment in general. So whether it's television, uh, film, video, magazines, even more, <laughs> um, weddings and funerals are considered events in a sense, but more so because people are always going to get married, people are always going to get, uh, people are going to die. Um, so there's more jewelry makeup artists. There's people who do makeup for weddings. Of course, there's makeup artists involved in television, film, video, magazines, and porn. Nothing's going to be shot until we're done doing what we do. So um, besides that, you know, lawyers, um, but we can even make money on lawyers. They do new headshots on the wall, the corporate uh, partners every year, and we do men's grooming for that. So there's even money in that. Of course, with an alcohol, cigarettes, and candy, we do their advertisements, we do their promos, we do their training videos. Makeup bars are still involved in all of this. So even in a recession, we're flourishing within those, and we're even involved uh, in the ones that I didn't turn green. I mean, there's so many avenues for money in this industry. It's kind of crazy. So another statistic for you to keep in your arsenal would be from the United States Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics, that makeup artistry was ranked number seven out of 30 um, for the top growth, meaning the industry is just growing and growing by leaps and bounds. Here's the thing about print. I was doing print work 20 something years ago. And 20 something years ago, we did not have 5,000 magazines, <laughs> uh, you know, within beauty and fashion and realm, what like, like that. But it's, of course, what women makeup artists want to do. Uh, and it's something that everybody, it's a sought after thing. But look at all those magazines. You've been to a bookstore lately? It's not just the beauty and fit fashion ones. It is the ones that also have, you know, I don't care if it's for cards or computers, there's an advertisement of somebody standing next to it, whether it's a male or female, there's been a make parts there. Just like the model was hired for every advertisement or training video or whatnot, a makeup artist was there for not just all these magazine covers, but every page within the magazine. So that's a lot more work than people can acknowledge. And I know, um, the average film, you know, how many makeup artists are on set versus the smallest, a small film on it, uh, maybe a little independent that's shot in a week, um, typically has at least two makeup artists. And up to your highest blockbuster films, of course, are going to have a much larger crew. The largest crew that I know of to record, and there could even be a larger one that I'm aware of, was 99 makeup artists it took to film The Bridge of Stole Christmas. Um, and then there's something new now that didn't used to be around when I did all this um, called the internet. You might have heard of it. Since 1996, the internet came out. Of course, most people didn't own a computer till more like 99, 2000. Crazy. So remember all those magazines? Okay, there was only seven international beauty and fashion magazines when I started, and I got magazine work. And now there's over 5,000. <laughs> Not to mention uh, 
everything that all the pictures on the internet. So for every website, every homepage, every brochure, every billboard, every, every, everything, um, there's work out there for makeup artists. So the internet alone, whew, man, a bazillion images, of course, as you know that, even if you just did porn, there is so much work out there. Of course, some people don't want anything to do with it, but it's the point that there is so much work. Makeup artistry is continuing to grow and escalate, and there are people who will say, you know what, the industry's oversaturated, and that's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. The industry is oversaturated with shitty schools, I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of schools. Like I said, there's one practically on every corner nowadays. People who worked, you know, at the mall one Christmas break for six months are opening schools. There's schools opened by people who don't know anything about makeup, who've never done a film in their life, have never done fashion week in their life, have never done anything, yet they think they're teaching it. And sadly, people aren't doing their research. So people are attending these schools. So my point is, is the industry oversaturated? It's oversaturated with graduates and schools who don't know what they're doing. I will agree to that, but it is not oversaturated with talented makeup artists. And I never thought I would learn as much as I have. I learned not just makeup, but hair, stage, film, photography, learn about lighting, everything. It's been an amazing experience. How many times have you seen a celebrity look like shit on the runway? You know, the, the red carpet to going to an event. It happens. Happens a lot. If you just Google bad makeup, <laughs> you'd be amazed how many celebrities have gotten bad makeups. And the reason is there's not enough great makeup artists going around. So that's proof and evidence right there that there is work out there for those that are good and know what they're doing. So oversaturated? No. Um, all my grads that, you know, they, they're good at what they do, they're all working. They're turning down work. And if you follow me on Facebook or whatever, you already met some of my grads. You know who they are. You stalk them too. You know they're working. My name is Jasmine Ellison. I'm from Pasadena, California. I was trained by Donna three years ago, and two months out of school, I was on A-list celebs. My first celebrity was um, TV personality Wendy Williams, Eve, Minnie Driver, Rochelle Eights, Mike Epps, Boris Kojo. The list goes on, not to brag or anything. Coming here for training has meant a lot to me because I made the decision to come here because I was no longer in love with being a hairstylist. I was tired of doing the same thing, tired of sitting in the salon, and so, you know, at 26, I took the risk, took a big financial hit because I had a full-blown clientele in the salon, and I just took the leap, decided I was gonna do makeup school, and I've been rolling ever since. The best decision I could have ever made. Donna, thank you so much for all that you've taught me. Um, the things that you have taught me have gotten me pretty far in my career, and I will forever be grateful for that. My name is Aaron Paul, and I came to train with Donna in 2006. I moved here from Kentucky, and I had never done makeup ever before in my whole life. I just knew that it was something I wanted to do and I never could have imagined learning as much as I did from Donna and she really teaches you so much more than makeup. I had no confidence in myself and Donna saw something in me that I didn't see and after years of working in retail makeup she had me come back to the school and start instructing and that really helped build up my confidence and now I finally see what she saw in me and my career has just taken off in ways that I could have never imagined. Uh, my original goal when I started school was to work with Gwen Stefani and after starting to pursue a freelance career in makeup less than a year ago, um, I made my dream come true and I met Gwen Stefani and assisted her makeup artist six months later. So Donna has completely changed my life. If you are serious about wanting to become a makeup artist and you want to learn from the best person in the business, not only about the skill of doing makeup, but the business of makeup and what it takes to really be successful, Donna Me is 
the best you could ever get. Because I was just so excited to finally be doing what I really want to do is work, work in the entertainment industry and I just didn't know how. I didn't even know how to get started. And uh, I'm just so, so grateful for Donna. Uh, second class, uh, expert artistry, I booked my first music video. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I can't believe it. I'm not even graduated yet. And I booked my first music video. It was for Redman. Uh, he had done a song for uh, the Biker Boys movie. From that music video, I got Jennifer Lopez. I was still in school. I hadn't even graduated yet. I don't think I would have had the confidence, though, if I wasn't coming here because Donna really, was, she was so supportive. Uh, she gave me the confidence that I really needed to be able to, to do that. My name is Christina McLamb, and I'm originally from Canada. I lived up and down the East Coast, but I am currently based here in California. Let's see, I started taking classes with Donna in the autumn of 2013, and I graduated just a couple months ago. I've done a lot. I've already been published in three magazines. I just did something for Oprah. I was in New York for a month. I worked Fashion Week. She loves her students. We're her babies. And we really feel that from her. It's not it's not just words, it is genuine. She's a really kind-hearted soul and a wonderful woman. Hi, my name is Cesare and I'm from Montebello, um, LA County. I've done makeup for the San Diego Charger Cheerleaders. Um, I was on their makeup team for three years. I did makeup for ABC's The Bachelor. I did makeup for MTV for one of the TV shows. Honestly, I would not be the person who I am today. I was 17 years old when I attended Makeup Academy here and I knew nothing about makeup. And with Donna's training and everything that she's taught me, not only does she teach me, you know, the makeup skills and the professionalisms of it, but just how to be an artist out there in the industry and how to be yourself. And I'm now 24 years old and my work is all over the place and it's because of Donna. So those of you that aspire to do makeup, I'm talking to you. I hope that if you're watching this, it's inspiring you to believe in yourself and to go after it. Your significant other or parents or whoever you're listening to right now, they are not, they're living your life. They are not feeling that animosity in their chest every day going to a job that they don't like. They are not there experiencing that you're irritated when you come home, that you're starting arguments with your, you know, husband or friends or roommate or whatever it is. They're not living your life. But you know what? They're running your life. And I don't want that for anybody. Uh, if you want to fly, you got to give up the shit that weighs you down. So um, I'm talking to you again. So uh, you're not just weighed down, you're tied down if you're listening and believing everybody else. And if uh, you stand up to some people, they're going to try and tell you you can't do it. So that's when you have to just turn around and say, watch me. If you believe in yourself and you go for it and you are willing to work hard, you really can do anything you choose.